Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. phone's ringing again. I ain't gonna answer it. Probably one of your cronies wanting to chew the fat. Delilah! Jack blasted sister of mine. When she wants to be deep, she's deep. All right, you ringing monster, I'll get you. Yes, Tucker here. Well, Mr. Tucker, this is Claudia Norton. Yes, young woman, what be ailing with you? Are, are you busy now, Mr. Tucker? Man of my activities is always busy, ma'am, but you need help? Well, you need advice? I got time for you. We really don't need either, thanks, but... David and I want to come over and talk to you right away. I can tell by the sound of your voice you got something percolating. Spill the beans now, ma'am. Spill them. Surprise! We're not going to tell you till we see you. I ain't a man of great patience, ma'am. Well, I ain't a girl of great patience either, Mr. Tucker, so we'll be right over. Oh, oh, say, Mr. Tucker. Yes, ma'am? David says to put on your hat and your overcoat and be ready to hit the road. Where are we hitting it for, ma'am? Oh, I can't tell you that, but we'll be over in five minutes. Goodbye. Mrs. Norton! Mrs. Norton! Ah, uh, that ain't like a woman. Hey, Mr. Tucker! Hey, Mr. Tucker! Coming, son. Coming as fast as these picky uni legs will carry me. Mr. What's Tucker? all this hullabaloo, hey? Hey! You two young'uns are screeching like a pack of beagles howling after a fallen deer. The hunting season open? The hunting season's open for us. Where are we heading for, neighbor? It's only four o'clock, be my watch. What are you doing back so early from the city, son? Wait a minute. One question at a time, please. We're heading for Eastbrook Center, number one. Number two, I'm back in Eastbrook because my wife and I have come to a big decision. You have, hey? Yes, sir. Well, let a poor old man hear what the news is before he breaks in two with impatience. Just get in the car, Mr. Tucker, and you will find out. Oh, you're stringing this thing out like them kids who blow bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't sitting foot onto this here automobile until you tell me where we're going and what we're going for. He's being difficult, then. All right, get in. All right, son, when you use that tune on me, I know I'm licked. <laughs> yeah, push over, darling. Come on, make room for Mr. Tucker. I don't yes. need much room. He yeah. just made me shrunk like a plucked chicken. <laughs> We're off! Hooray! Can I tell him now, David? I'm bursting. All right, go ahead. Tell him. Mr. Tucker, we are on our way to see Counselor Rupert Abel Hankins. Counselor Hankins, eh? Yeah, you you, uh, know him? Know him, know him well. Rupert and me was brung up together. Only he he was brung up about 20 years later than me. We met him first when he made the arrangements to sell your house to us. He was my second taste of Connecticut. You were my first. Well, uh... What are we driving down to see Counselor Hankins about? It ain't there uh, something about that deed of your house? Well, what are you dragging me yeah, into it? Well, take it easy. Take it easy. It has nothing to do with your house. It has nothing to do with our deed. And it has nothing to do with you. No. Then it sounds to me like it ain't got much to do with anything. Mr. Tucker, you remember when you were over at our house last night? Oh, sure I remember. I got the memory of an elephant. Remember what you came over to tell us about? Ma'am, you're talking to me as if I was a spewing baby. <laughs> Jang near lost my teeth on that one. <laughs> Come over to tell you about that land laying across the road from you. Oh, it sure did break my heart when you said you didn't have the green dollars to buy it with. Yes? Yeah, it broke our hearts, too. But I reconciled myself. I'm a man of philosophy and strong will. I went home and I reconciled myself. See, David, we have neither strong will nor philosophy. We didn't reconcile ourselves, Mr. Tucker. I says to myself, if them two young Nortons be strapped, they be strapped. That's all there is to it. You can't take money out of empty pockets. Nope. It's one thing you can't do. No, no. So I reconciled myself, and any day now I'm expecting that land to be sold to some city folks who'll turn the meadow land into swimming pools and the cornfields into golf courses. David, aren't you glad we didn't reconcile ourselves? 
Aren't you delighted we have no philosophy and strong will? I certainly Aren't do. you beside yourself that we don't know when our pockets are empty and we're broke? Yes, sir, I revel in it. Now, so look I. here. Where are we going and what are all these smiles and giggles and rib pushings going on? I told you that we're on our way to Counselor Hankins office. And it just so happens that Counselor Hankins is in charge of selling that piece of land across the road. Well, everybody knows that, ma'am. It was published in the East Brooktown Crier. Oh, how that Hankins horn swoggles himself into getting any business, I'll never know. Never. No, nope. Mr. Tucker, can, can't you imagine why we were going to see Counselor Hankins? Well, if I could, ma'am, I wouldn't be asking you questions point blank, would I? Well, no. answer him point blank. Well, seeing as I'm not the man you are, Mr. Tucker, I couldn't sleep all night. And seeing David is the kind of man that I'm not, Mr. Tucker, he couldn't sleep all night either. So we both woke up this morning thinking we just had to have that land. Huh? Yeah. So, when David was in New York today, he saw his brother and they made some kind of arrangement. You know, man, about stocks and the bank and their father's estate or something or other. Who cares about the details because David came home all of a sudden at 3 o'clock and, Mr. Tucker, we are going to buy it. You, you, you young'uns going to buy that land across the road? Yes, yeah. sir, you heard the young woman, Mr. Tucker. It's going to be ours. Well, I'll be... Well, then someday there will be a herd of cows grazing in them pastures and tall green corn reaching to the sky. You bet your boots. Sure, I'm proud of you, young'uns. You got the wisdom that took me nigh on to 86 years to fetch up to. You're putting your money in the land, and I'm, I'm proud to know you. Oh, David, drive faster. I think I'm going to weep. <laughs> Pretty excited myself. This is like a crazy dream. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm sure honored you brung me along. Come on in, Sid. Go ahead, darling. Uh, he hello, Mr. Hankins. Well, taint you Nortons. Hello, you old scarecrow. You addressing me, Rupert Aber Hankins? Ain't talking to myself, Jared Tucker. If you ever grow old enough to be an old scarecrow, Mr. Hankins, it'll be over my dead body. I dare say it will be. I dare say it will be. We'll set you down, all of you. There'll be enough chairs around. Thank you having you. some uh, some sort of trouble between you? No, no, everything's fine between us, Mr. Hankins. Well, that's remarkable. When I see folks doing business with Jared Tucker, I'm always expecting lawsuits, litigations, claims for irreparable damage, and other infringements of human relations. Well, it's nothing like that. Yes, and the joke's on you, Rupert. I'm here just as a spectator, Counselor Hankins. So start the performance, Mr. Norton. I'm, I'm itching, itching. Uh, Counselor Hankins, I, I understand that you're in charge of the sale of that property on River Road, directly across from our farm. Yeah, that's right. Fifty-one and a quarter acres belonging to Ned Mills. Or rather, belonging to the estate of Ned Mills. Fifty-one and a quarter acres. Fifty-one and a quarter acres of good Connecticut land. Mm-hmm. Bounded on the north by Jad Tucker's property. Bounded on the east by the Norton property. That's bounded right. on the south by the Matthew Warren property. And bounded on the west by the county line. Deeds all cleared. Well, it's exactly about that that we have come to speak to you about. I see. Cigar? No, thanks. I, I have my pipe. <coughs> I wouldn't mind having a cigar, Counselor Hankins. <coughs> Ain't cigars bit strong for you, Jared Tucker? How's that? Ain't got a mind to see you coughing up your strength, but they say you're old enough to know what you're doing. Have a cigar. Uh, just for that, Rupert Hankins, I'll have two. <clears throat> Cigarette, uh, Mrs. Norton? Oh, no, thanks. I, I don't smoke. Uh -huh. My daddy always felt women oughtn't to smoke. Uh, Counselor Hankins, it's very pleasant to sit around and chat with you, but um, what about that land? Well, you know all about it. Probably know more about it than most other folks, seeing uh, you can lean out your window and feast your eyes on it. Oh, David, I can't stand the suspense. Tell him right out. Strange, ain't it, that Ned Mills never built a house on that property. Hardly ever set foot on it. Heard tell some strange stories about how the day his grandfather staked out that piece of ground, he had a seizure, rolled over and died. Came true. There ain't a member of Ned Mills' family that set foot on that ground since. Well, I, I don't believe in superstitions. Do you, David? Uh, nonsense. I don't see why we're here listening to Counselor Hankins talk, talk, talk. Uh, let these young'uns do their business, Rupert, or you'll be having to do with me. I ain't interfering, just waiting, filling the time with a spot of local color. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hankins, we've come here today because we want to buy that land. There, you said it. Yeah, I figured that one out about five minutes ago, son. 
I have an approximate idea of just about how much it's selling by the acre, and if you could give me the exact amount, I think we could draw up a contract of sale and and we can settle a deal right now. Easier said than done, Mr. Norton. Easier said than done. But, but why? He said the deed was clear. I thought that settled everything. You're going to make it complicated, Mr. Hankins. Just so you can collect a bigger fee for the transaction, I ain't going to let you do it. I ain't going to let you rook them out of one honest cent. Need a lawyer to deal with a lawyer, I always say. Hush up, Jared Tucker. Hush up. Uh, right. we, uh, we have the cash, Mr. Hankins. We're all ready. From what you said, the property was in the... In the clear, and we could just purchase it right off. It was in the clear, son. Boundaries chalked off. No claims. Deed fits a fiddle. Well, then what's to stop it? Taint mine to sell. What, Chad? What? It was mine to sell, but taint mine to sell no more. Make yourself plain, Rupert. I done sold the land. But you what? Yep. <clears throat> drew, up <a> con- <clears throat> drew up a contract sale not more than an hour ago. Never knew there'd be such a rush on the property. Would have asked more money for it if I'd known, but... Sold the land not more than an hour ago. You, uh, you sold all of it? That's what I did. Every square acre of it. You, uh, you ain't just saying that to make us wet our lips all the more, are you? I ain't that shrewd, Tucker. You're the kind of man that would do that, but I ain't that shrewd. No. So, so it's sold. To, to, to anybody we know? Sold to a city man. Oh, I, I can't divulge him, but, uh... Yep, deed's all squared away. Sure would like better to have sold it to you, but... No. Yeah, it would have been kind of like keeping it in the family, but lawyers, no choosers, that land sold. Well, well, I, uh, I guess that takes care of that. If huh? I ever find out this scallywag of a lawyer's rooked us, well, I just better never find out, that's all. I just, just never better had. I, I wonder who bought it. No, oh, what's the difference? Yeah, I guess so. We really couldn't afford it anyway. Well, come on, darling. Let's go home. You know, I I think we got that land very cheap, David. (laughs) We got? What do you mean? Well, exactly. Didn't cost us a cent. We saved hundreds of dollars. And and it's ours, in a way. Just deciding that we should buy it. David, in spite of everything, I think that makes it our land. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Shopping for a spring outfit, if you have something definite in mind, frequently involves quite a search. En route, pause at the familiar red cooler for a delicious ice-cold Coca-Cola and see if it isn't easier to make a selection when you shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. (laughs) 